So we've got this trend on my recent videos where I'm looking at reducing the number of keys in my layouts, and people like to make this joke about me ending up with a single key keyboard using Morse code. Now, obviously, that's quite primitive, uh, but I did think, what if we could use a single key per hand? And instead of using Morse code, we used features like tap dance in the modern keyboard firmwares. Then would it be possible to actually come up with a layout where you can type reasonably fast on this with only a single key per side? So on the layout I've come up with for the single key per hand keyboard, I've actually got spaces for 50 different characters just from these two keys, and that's pretty amazing. So we've got all the alpha keys covered and the number keys and some basic punctuation. So as I've got this layout now, I'm quite limited in terms of numbers of symbols that we've got access to, but it's quite possible to extend the layout. Uh, it just needs a little bit more work to achieve that. Now I've actually gone as far as getting the hardware sorted for this keyboard as well. So a single board per side with just enough room for the controller and the single key. And I've used the kind of process that I use with my other boards where it includes the reset switch, the slider for the power and the battery connector as well. So my familiar format for these PCBs and I've ordered it in purple with the gold plating process on as well. So they should look really cool. So unfortunately, these boards haven't actually arrived in time for this video due to a bit of a slowdown on the shipping side. Uh, but I want to give a massive shout out to PCB Way, who have actually covered the cost of these boards. And they let me tick all the expensive options. So we've got the gold plating and all the rest of it, which is fantastic. Um, and I actually use PCB Way for my Ferris Sweep build that I did uh, a while ago. So I'm very happy to recommend the service they provide there. So once the boards arrive, I'll definitely do a follow-up video and, and put, the, put it all together and solder it all together and show you how it looks. Uh, and in particular, I think it's going to be really interesting seeing how you can actually use these, because obviously once the keyboard gets this small, I could actually stick it to my finger rather than the table and my finger coming to the board. I can stick it to my finger or my thumb and I can type like this, or I can just type by tapping any surface. So there's all kinds of options. And you could even put it under your feet and type with your feet. I think you might have to tune the, the timing on the firmware side for that to work, but the possibilities are limitless when they get this small. So let's look at the layout that I've come up with to make all this possible. And it's surprising just how easy it is to get your head around, actually. So there are 10 layers in total. So basically, every character output from this is, is using the tap dance feature from the firmware. And that's available in ZMK now and QMK. So layer one of this layout is basically shortcuts to different layers. So we've got six positions between the two halves. So we've got three on each side. So there's a tap dance for each of those three. So single tap, double tap, and triple tap on both left and right halves. So we've got six layers that we can jump into with a single tap dance event from layer one. So all the alpha keys are then split over layers two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so you can get to those from that first layer with the, with the tap dance sequence, and then you output the letter that you want with the tap dance sequence on the next layer. So because we've got one shot layer switches on this first layer, every time you output a character from the subsequent layer, it will jump straight back to that layer one, ready for you to do the same thing for your next character. So tap dance in ZMK is insanely flexible, uh, really easy to work with as well in terms of the syntax. And you can actually combine it with holds as well. So you could do a tap and then a hold, and that would output something different again. So if you really wanted to add a lot of different functionality to this layout, you could take it even further than I have here, because I'm just using the tap uh, events from the tap dance feature. So on layers six and seven, we've got some system keys like backspace, return, tab, escape, space, and caps lock. And then on the right hand of layer seven, we've got three more layer switches. So you can jump to three more additional layers, and that's where we've got our number keys. And this is that mechanism by which we could add additional layers if we wanted to. So it's just simply a question of adding more layer switches to one of those additional first six layers so that you can jump out of one of those and into another layer. And you can kind of just keep doing that. Uh, obviously, the sequence gets more complicated as you add more, but you, there's no real limit to the number of characters that you can actually build into this layout. So you can see it's actually quite simple to get your head around. And I think without too much bother, it would even be quite fast to type on. So in terms of numbers of key presses per character, we've basically got a minimum of two because you always need to jump into a layer before firing the key for the character itself. Um, and then the maximum of six, so you know two triple taps, one triple tap for one of the layers, and then a triple tap for a key on that layer. Uh, and with numbers, you've got another potential three. So three triple taps would be the maximum for a number key. So nine taps for a number, worst case scenario. Um, obviously, some of them are less. So you've got an average of, of fewer strokes than that per sequence. And I don't think that's too bad considering the massive reduction in finger movement we're achieving here. Uh, especially if you think about how you can actually tune the layout to make sure your most common characters are on those uh, sequences with the fewer numbers of keystrokes. Now let's look at the maximum theoretical speed we might achieve on this keyboard. Now I'm basing this on 700 milliseconds per character. So that's 250 milliseconds for that first tap dance, then allowing 100 milliseconds before you start the second tap dance, obviously then the next 250 milliseconds for that one, and allowing another 100 before you start the next character. So 700 milliseconds is 17 words a minute, which for something with just two keys is pretty amazing. 
So obviously I've only just started using this keyboard, so I can't give you a fast typing demo yet. I'm still using a cheat sheet to, to work out the sequences as I'm going, um, but I'll put that on screen just for fun. I'll probably speed it up, um, but, uh, but you can see that it is quite possible to type on this. So what's really interesting when you type on this is this you're quite aware of this massive reduction in cognitive load when you realize your fingers are already in the right place for the next key. Uh, so I think once the actual sequencing becomes muscle memory, the effect of that is going to be quite remarkable. It's going to be quite interesting seeing just what it feels like to type on this once those sequences become muscle memory. You, so obviously you're trading learning the spatial positioning for your fingers in exchange for a timing based sequence uh, but you know you are exchanging that you you are removing completely having to learn different positions for your fingers all you're then thinking about is sequencing so it's going to be really interesting seeing how that pans out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, please explore the channel for some slightly more serious content on keyboards and layouts and design and usability and workflow and please like and share and comment and subscribe too it'll all help other people find this video and support the channel so it's super appreciated and i'll see you in the next video Don't